I've been playing around with HF Mobile for many years, but here's something that might interest you. Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Thank you for joining me. My uh, name is Peter Waters and my ham radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. As we shoot this video, uh, we're coming into better weather now. And more and more people will be looking at going out portable or mobile. I want to really talk about uh, mobile antennas, in particular uh, the uh, diamond uh, range of antennas. Now, some of you may not know that we have been the official factory importers of diamond for over 35 years. We've got a very good relationship with diamond and I visited their factory a couple of times. So we know quite a lot about diamond antennas. And I've always found that the diamond antennas work extremely well. They're mechanically, they're very nicely made. And although I've tried various ones for HF Mobile, I tend often to migrate back to the base-loaded quarter wave. Now, a base-loaded quarter wave is a very popular antenna because it's quite compact, it's simple to adjust, and in actual fact, diamond uh, quarter wave antennas, the base loaded quarter wave antennas, have got a nice little clutch arrangement, which I'll just show you on the screen now. You just turn this clutch, uh, and it immediately enables you to adjust the length of the resonator at the top section of the antenna to wherever you want to be in the band and then just lock it in place. And uh, it's a sort of a fiberglass um, top section with, I, I think there's a, a copper um, conductor inside the fiberglass. But it's, anyway, it's, it's a nice compact antenna. And in actual fact, um, I've been doing some work with the 20 meter version, but I mean, they, they do um, antennas for all the bands from uh, six meters up to 80 meters. But I've been using the 20 meter one because I like that band anyway. It's generally speaking open for most of the day and a good part of the night these days. And uh, it's only just over a meter long. Now you might think, well, a meter long antenna is not going to be very effective, is it? Well, first of all, we all know, I think, that uh, the problem with a resonant mobile antenna is that it's fairly narrow banded. Well, in actual fact, there are ways around this and it shouldn't actually inhibit you from moving around the band. And I'm gonna show you today, I've called it the two-way stretch. I've got it, I'm gonna show you today how you can actually stretch the bandwidth of a mobile antenna, basically on any, any mobile antenna really, but I concentrate on the diamond ones, uh, how you can stretch the bandwidth of the antenna and perhaps cover the whole of the band without adjusting the antenna. So let's, uh, let me explain where I'm coming from on this. Antenna theory tells us that the feed impedance of a base loaded short quarter wave antenna has got a very, very low impedance. That means to say that it's gonna be a hopeless mismatch if we feed it with 50 ohm coax. It also tells us that the base loaded short quarter wave is going to have a very narrow bandwidth. We'd be lucky if we get a bandwidth of more than about 80 or 90 kilohertz on the 20 meter band at the two to one VSWR points. That's what the theory tells us. But you know, I've learnt with antennas that theory is all very well, but it doesn't always translate into reality. And it's interesting to ponder if theory tells us one thing and in practice we get another, then we are missing something somewhere. Now I'm going to come back to this uh, antenna efficiency in a, another video fairly shortly. But for the moment, I want to look at the bandwidth that we get with a mobile antenna. And I'm going to use 20 meters as the example because it's, as I said, it's a band that I operate a lot on. And it produces some interesting results. So let's take a look. The base of the antenna is very well made, and if you turn it around, you can see that it's a PL259 fitting. 
Now the winding is quite interesting. If you take a close look, you'll see the winding is divided into two sections, and I think that's to avoid self-resonance. And the total length of the winding is approximately 26 centimeters. And here you can see the antenna mounted on top of my uh, motorhome. Makes quite a nice, neat installation. But I don't drive with it, uh, only use it as a portable or static mobile uh, antenna. Now to assess the performance of the antenna, I've used this uh, Zigu X6100, the portable uh, HF transceiver. I'm using it on its internal batteries, which gives me five watts out, which is enough to um, get some useful measurements. The other interesting thing about this transceiver is it's got a very, very nice built-in VSWR um, analyzer, which not only covers the handband, but you can make it um, expand so it covers quite a large chunk of the HF spectrum. So basically in this transceiver, you've got a little uh, antenna analyzer built in. Anyway, let's see what sort of VSWR we get with the antenna on my small motorhome. I've set the spectrum analyzer on the X6100 to scan between 11 megahertz and 17 megahertz approximately, and you can see a very definite point of resonance there. Um, it's just above 14.15 megahertz, but I could zoom into that if I wanted to. But let's have, have a look now at what my normal antenna analyzer shows. Here on the antenna analyzer you can see I've zoomed in so we've got a frequency resonance of 14.175 megahertz and the spectrum coverage is plus or minus 150 kilohertz so roughly it covers the whole of the 20 meter band. Now there's two interesting things about this display. The first is despite the fact that we would expect to see a very low impedance on such a short antenna we're getting a very good match using 50 ohm coax. We wouldn't expect such a good match. And the other thing is that we're getting quite a decent bandwidth across the band. All right, it's rising up towards three to one at the band edges, but that's not too bad for an antenna that is supposed to be narrow banded. Now, one reason for that could be the fact that the coil is low Q. It's, it's got a very small diameter and that must play a part. But I think there's something else. And that something else, together with that very good match, I'm going to cover in another video. For the moment, let's see what we can actually get in practice out of this antenna, rather than worrying about why. Now the test setup is the X6100 feeding four meters of RG58 into the base of the antenna with the internal X6100 antenna tuner for matching. The power meter is set to 5 watts and I'm using a Morse key to generate the power so it will never quite make 5 watts but just watch the meter between the power out at the edge of the band and the power out in the middle of the band. Right at the bottom of the band with a near 3 to 1 VSWR the meter's hitting around about 4 watts on peaks total loss a tiny 0.28 dB. Center of the band output is about the same as the edge of the band, the actual loss is even better. So let me show you a simple demonstration. I've got this antenna resonant at 14.17 megahertz, roughly the center of the 20 meter band. I then move down to the bottom of the band at the CW end and put out some CQ calls to see what signal strength I got on reverse beacon. Now bear in mind this transceiver is running just 5 watts from an internal battery. It is running near a 3 to 1 VSWR indicated but with an internal antenna tuner switched in it is delivering full power into the antenna. So just take a look and see the signal reports I got with 5 watts from the internal battery with a 3 to 1 VSWR. You can see the reverse beacon signal strengths I got reported were pretty reasonable and pretty well spread around. So let's now have a look at the actual signal strengths. Now here you see the actual results. The left hand column shows the stations that we're reporting. 
The third column along, which is quite interesting, shows you the distance to that reporting station. And the far right column shows you the signal strength above the local noise. And most of those reports were 13 dB or more above noise, topping out at a whopping 20 dB. All this on 5 watts. And if you want to know what would happen if you were running 100 watts, add around about 13 dB to each of these figures. And as a final check on the actual power output of the antenna at the edge and the centre of the band, I used this calibrated fill strength meter, which confirmed the findings of the power meter. So, interesting tests and demonstration that uh, if you've got a resonant single band antenna, you aren't actually confined to the resonant point of that antenna or a little bit either side. You can actually have a two-way stretch. You can stretch it out probably across the band. And provided, of course, that you have an antenna tuner unit. Now, the ideal way is to have the antenna tuner inside the radio, but you may have a radio where you have an external tuner. Having an external tuner, then you can enjoy the same benefit. Do bear in mind, of course, that the VSWR doesn't disappear if you've got an internal or an external antenna tuner. All you're doing is enabling the transceiver to deliver full power even into a modest VSWR. So that, that VSWR on your cable will always exist unless you tune your antenna to a different frequency. It will always exist, but it doesn't really matter because if you've got an internal antenna tuner, or let's be more politically correct, uh, an internal matching unit, then it will deliver full power into your mobile antenna. And your mobile antenna will radiate equally well, whether it's in the center of the band or the band digit edges, all other things, of course, being equal. So if you're going to go out mobile or portable and uh, you're looking at uh, how to make things more flexible, this is one way. And as you can see, even when I operated at the band edges with an antenna that was resonant in the center of the band and a small antenna, only one meter long, a fifth of what it should be full size, I was still able to get some good signal reports. So give it a try. Enjoy your ham radio. In the meantime, take care. And as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, by the way, don't forget to press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.